Honorable Ministers, dear co-chairs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Archbishop, the summit has almost come to an end. And with more than 1,200 participants, it was the biggest regional summit <coughs> to date. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a proof for the great trust of the people into the hospitality of our host state. So thank you very much to our host. Thank you very much to South Africa. And it is also a proof that Cape Town South Africa, the entire African continent is a place to be. We have fast-growing countries, young societies, frontier developments, so a lot of opportunities. But of course, at the same time, we are facing some challenges which we have addressed in the past few days. We have talked about business models beyond commodities in order to foster inclusive growth. We have talked about intra-African trade and mobility of the people. And we have talked about the biggest opportunity for Africa, the next generation, the youth. Self-confident, dynamic, creative, and always embracing disruptive technologies. And even more important, this meeting was to turn talks into action. And when you talk about action in terms of business models, we all know how critical investments in infrastructures are. So we identified 23 projects in our infrastructure initiative. And if we talk about human capital, then health and employment will remain the pillars of our work. So for example, we have best practice models to foster resilience, facing future pandemics, for example, in Mali, and if we talk about employment, the African Business Council has kicked off here at our summit the African Skills Initiative. And hopefully it will be as successful as our Africa and Grow Africa partnership, which we co-founded four years ago and then World Economic Forum in Africa. And today it is benefiting eight million people and it created 60,000 jobs. And each of the jobs is worth your effort because it's for the people, for the communities, and their families. So ladies and gentlemen, this meeting was a meeting to getting things done. And it is a proof that the great appetite for public-private cooperation, because only together the problems can be solved as partners and friends. So thank you very much for your engagement. And allow me to say a particular thank you to our respected co-chairs. Thank you for your leadership. And thank you for being ambassador for our mission. And allow me also to say thank you to all the many helping hands in the background. Particular thank you to our African team under the leadership of our regional director for Africa, Elsie Kenser. And in 12 months, we'll come together to have a follow-up on all our projects in the next World Economic Forum on Africa, then 2016. And this summit will take place in Rwanda. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor and pleasure to invite the Finance Minister and Minister of Economic Development of Rwanda, His Excellency Minister Clever Gatete, to invite all of us to the next World Economic Forum on Africa. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Safiri Prosla, uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu, uh, Dr. Donald Kaberuka, President of the African Development Bank, Honorable Ministers here present, business leaders, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to say by say congratulations to all of you for such a successful World Economic Forum on Africa 2015. I wish to thank in particular the government of South Africa 
for the home, hospitality, and for providing a good environment for all of us to exchange ideas on issues that are important for our continent. I want particularly to thank uh, His Excellency uh, President Zuma for really uh, gracing us this occasion with his presence for the last two days. And this has been very, very useful for us. I also wish to convey our appreciation to the World Economic Forum for once again convening distinguished leaders interested in the prosperity of Africa. We've seen the great leadership and participation, of course, of Professor Schwabs and his team, including our, the Africa director, uh, Eriz Kanza, who has been very, very active in terms of facilitating us. This year's theme, meetings, contributions, as well as attendance continue to demonstrate the significant opportunities that the African continent presents today. The continent's dynamism is demonstrated by its high economic growth rate, averaging 5% uh, in the past, growing the middle income, middle income class, the young and more skilled population, and many other positive indicators. We know that these must be accompanied by consistent efforts to create jobs, build infrastructure, and develop healthy, capable, and hopeful young Africans. There is no better place to take this discussion forward than in Rwanda, a country that has demonstrated that Africa can truly rise, even from ashes, having lost over a million of our most treasured resource, our people. Rwandans have overcome the most difficult challenges with resilience, hope, and above all, restored ambition and a keen desire to build productive partnerships with the region and the rest of the world. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to welcome uh, you all to the World Economic Forum that will take place in Ichigari, Rwanda, in 2016. Rwanda is testimony that Africans can aspire to and confidently face a much brighter future. Let me share with you five reasons why. First, we can establish high standards of good governance. We have created a safe, secure place to live and to do business. Over the last 20 years, we have reconstructed our fractured society, building national unity and national purpose. Rwanda is politically stable with well-functioning institutions, rule of law, and no tolerance for corruption. Consequently, we have been ranked as the fourth best governed country on the African continent. Secondly, we have established strong macroeconomic stability. We continue to execute sound policies with fiscal discipline and a stable inflation rate. These have enabled average annual economic growth of 8% over the last 10 years and lifted 10% of our population out of, of poverty in just five years. This illustrates that it is possible in Africa to achieve both high growth and inclusive social economic development. Thirdly, we believe that the private sector is the engine of economic growth. The World Bank and the World Economic Forum rank Rwanda as the third easiest place to do business and the fourth most competitive economy, respectively, on the African continent. We want to go even further in making it easier, better, and cheaper to do business in Africa. Fourthly, we have made it easier for you to visit Rwanda. Our national airline, Rwandair, flies to 18 destinations, mostly within Africa, and can connect you easily from anywhere in Africa to Chigari. This is in addition to several other airlines that can fly to Rwanda. All African passport holders are eligible to receive visas on arrival. Others can obtain visas at the nearest Rwandan embassy or apply for an entry permit online and expect to get a response within a maximum of three days. Lastly, we are your gateway to the bigger markets of Africa. Rwanda has nearly 12 million people, but we are also located in the heart of Africa, and you can get to the farthest point of the continent in about four hours. Both English and French are spoken in Rwanda, which facilitates our connection with most regions. We are also members of several regional economic communities and have worked with them to create free trade areas customs union, and for some, even common market. We belong to East African community, the economic community of the Great Lakes, 
the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, and also the economic community of the Central African states. Like the rest of the continent, Rwanda's long-term challenge is to not only create economic opportunities for all, but also productively harness the pool of young, new skilled workers. We are working hard to build a knowledge-based economy and build our competitiveness on the application of knowledge. In line with this, we have prioritized the use of ICT and the development of the Chigari Innovation Center to accelerate growth in other areas of our economy, including as a center of financial services. As part of this strategy, we, are part we have partnered with a world-class university, the Carnegie Mellon University, who have established their only African campus in Chigari. We therefore count on you to join us in 2016 and work with us to build all of these in order to reduce the cost of transactions in our region and the continent. We also invite you to see the beauty of our country, usually referred to as a country of the southern hills. If tracking mountain gorillas is on your bucket list, this is your chance to get, to get it done. You also, you also have opportunities to explore Rwanda's culture, rainforests, savanna tourist sites, among many other options. However, I can assure you that you will not definitely need winter coats because we never have winter in Rwanda. And also you can bring anything except plastic bags because they are prohibited by law. But first, I welcome you uh, all to the reception outside this room, which is hosted by the government of Rwanda, for a little flavor of Rwanda, and nothing will be to your visit to Rwanda next year. I thank you. Uh, for your kind attention, and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. We are all looking forward to come to Rwanda next year to our World Economic Forum on Africa 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, usually now I would say thank you and goodbye, but this year I'm delighted to invite Archbishop Desmond Tutu to the stage to close our World Economic Forum on Africa 2015 with his blessing. Your Excellency. Thank you so very much. I, I had been invited uh, uh, to participate uh, in uh, the conventional way. And I said, no, sorry. Uh, I can't impose on this wonderful uh, gathering of inspiring individuals. I can't impose on them the ramblings of a decrepit old man. Uh, I, I have reached the stage where I get up and walk into a room because I know what I'm going to do in that room. And when I arrive, what the heck am I doing here? But uh, someone said to me, it's not as bad as uh, you go up a flight of stairs and round about the middle, you stop and you say, was I going up or down? <laughs> Please, let us pray. God, we see you weeping. We see you weeping because your children can do what they are doing one another.
we see you weeping because infants and children die of preventable disease. They die because they do not have clean water. And you see us spending trillions on instruments of death and destruction. We see you weeping because of the way so many of us treat women. We see you weeping when you look at Boko Haram, ISIS, and the very many wars that are fought. We see you weeping as you look at the long straggling lines of women carrying children on their backs, flying from one refugee camp to another. And then, ah, we see a smile breaking over your face. Yes, you, you look down and you see the World Economic Forum. And you see the commitment that they have to improve the lot of women and children. We see, we see you beginning to smile through the tears because you see your children dedicated from this World Economic Forum who say they want to make this a better world. And we see a little angel wiping away your tears because the World Economic Forum says it's going to be your partner to make your world hospitable to goodness, opposed to corruption, improving the health of women and children. Thank you, God, for blessing this gathering. Go with those who have met here who have been inspired by what they heard and saw. Go with them so that they arrive safely in their destinations to begin to make your world what you would want it to be, a paradise. 
Amén.